Okay, so let's have a look at one of these power rails to see how it's created. So the best place to start is PPBus G3 Hot itself, because that's the first one that we need to do anything at all. So according to this power system architecture diagram, it's hardwired up to the AC adapter or the battery via the battery charger uh, or just straight off of the battery. Um, however, it's actually got a power source itself. So let's find that and look it up. So I'm going to search for PPBus G3 Hot. Now, this is going to be kind of difficult because this appears all over the place. So, uh, ppbus underscore G3H. And I'm going to start searching until I find whatever circuit has ppbus G3 hot as its output. So, let's start searching. So, we're going to find a lot of instances of ppbus G3 hot here. And I'm just going to keep tapping enter until I find ppbus G3 hot as an output. Here it is, so PP bus supply battery charger, and as you can see, oh, down here as the output side, as the right hand side, the output of this whole situation, we have PP bus G3 hot. So, this is the main power supply for the main rail on our logic board. Let's have a look and see how it works. So to start with, we're going to need a power input. So that power input is up in the top left corner here, which is where the inputs normally are. And it's PP18V5G3Hot charger. So this is the power coming out of the laptop charger and into the MagSafe connector in the corner of our logic board. So that's what's coming into this physical connector here. So let's see where it goes after that. So once we've come out of there, because we're dealing with an external power supply, we want to put some safety measures on this. So we've got an inrush limiter in the form of these two MOSFETs here and here. Now, these have the ability to switch off this input if there is a fault. So the gate on this dude here is connected up to the U7000 controller chip. So this chip has the ability to say, switch off the charger. And that will stop any power from coming into the system. There is another one over here and this is formed by a voltage divider that just simply checks if there is an obnoxious amount of voltage coming in through the charger. So if you suddenly try and pump uh, 50 volts into the laptop, this fella is gonna go no, and just switch that MOSFET off, and that's gonna cut the power off as well. So once we've gone through that, it's gonna come down here and into this section over here. Now, this section here is called a buck converter, and its purpose is to lower the voltage down as efficiently as possible and taking up as little space as possible. So um, it's formed by these two transistors with, which both switch on and off sequentially. So what the transistors are, are switches. When the gate on them is activated, they will either allow or they will close off the flow of power through the transistor. So um, the first one at the top here deals with the input and um, what this is going to do is switch on and off. So let's say, for example, for a moment that we have uh, 10 volts and we want to convert that into 5 volts. So what we need for that is a 50% duty cycle. So we turn this transistor on and off at an even 50% rate. So across a time period, half of the time it is on and half of the time it is off. So it is simply on, off, on, off, and so on. So we will have pulses of 10 and 0 coming out from here. And what will then happen is it will go through a coil, which is this guy here. And that coil will resist the changes. So it will resist the change from 0 to 10 and 10 to 0. And it will do this by storing some of that energy as an electromagnetic field. When the power comes on, the electromagnetic field will charge, absorbing some of that energy and reducing the output on the other side of the coil. And then when the power goes off, so it goes to zero, that electromagnetic field will collapse, outputting as electricity again. So from the pulses of 10 and zero coming out of our transistor, we get about five volts on the other side of the coil. But it'll be a bit bumpy and a bit wavy. So after that, we then have some capacitors that smooth off that wave into a nice steady line. Now, this other transistor, this helps prevent any flyback. So when the power goes low and the electromagnetic field in the coil collapses, it's basically just going to go everywhere. 
And to stop that from creating a sudden rush of electricity where we don't want it, this guy then opens up and drains part of that to ground to prevent it flying back into the rest of the system. So for here, we've got an 18 and a half volt input and we have approximately a 12 and a half volt output. So in order to do that, we're going to have a fairly high duty cycle. This is going to be on most of the time. So we're going to have on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And those short little off periods are going to lower the output from it. And that's the basics of how the buck converter works. And we're going to see these all over the place. So now we have about 12 and a half volts on PP bus G3 hot. Let's take a look at one of the other power supplies to see how that in turn is converted into another voltage. So let's head back to page three where our power system architecture was. And if we scroll down a bit on here, we'll see the U7300 down here. Now this boy creates 1.5 volts and that is what powers our system RAM. So the memory modules are on the logic board. So let's take a look at him. He's connected directly to PP bus G3 hot on this rail here. So let's search for the U7300, U7300. And as you can see here, we have something that looks awfully familiar. We've got a pair of transistors, a controller chip, and an output, and a coil, and a couple of capacitors. So what we've got is, firstly, let's track down our input. So our input, now normally the input's gonna be up in the top left here. However, we don't really have any inputs up here. Um, so uh, let's look at what's coming in to the pair of transistors. So if we look at the top one and follow that line back here, we get this guy. Now, who the hell is that? I don't know. Let's copy it and find out. So let's paste this and search for it. And that brings us back to our list of power rails. And if we zoom in here, we can see that this is an alternate name. So as the power is distributed throughout the, the logic board, it gets renamed to different things that are appropriate for what it's powering. So in this case, PPV and S5, 1V5, et cetera, et cetera, is equal to PP bus G3 hot. So we now know that PP bus G3 hot is 12 and a half volts approximately. So that means that this becomes PPV and S5, 1V5. So we now know that that input is 12 and a half volts. So if we go back to our circuit here and have a look at these boys, as you can see, we've got the familiar pair of transistors going into a coil and then going into a pair of capacitors and our output. So for here, we have 12 and a half volts coming in and we wanna convert that into one and a half volts. So for this, we've got quite a big step down now. So the duty cycle on this is going to be significantly lower if I round that 12 volts, 12 and a half volts to about 12 volts, just for simplicity's sake, uh, 1.5 is about an eighth of that. So that means we're going to be running about a 12.5% duty cycle. So we're gonna have a lot of offs and very little ons. So we're gonna have long pulse, we're gonna have a very short pulse of 12, 12 volts and then a long off section and then another very quick pulse of 12 volts. So then the coil is going to smooth that out to a very low output of about one and a half volts. So you can see that we have the same basic pattern again for this. Although the circuit itself looks a bit different, we still have that input, a pair of transistors, a controller chip, the capacitors and the output. So with this knowledge, let's have a look at that on the actual logic board. So we can translate this theory that we've learned into what it looks like on the board itself. So let's start out by looking for the U7000 on the circuit board. So let's switch over to the board view and search for U7000. Whoop. So let's zoom out so we can see where the hell we are. So I can see that we're on the back of the board here and we're just below the RAM module connector. So let's switch out and take a look. So if we look, we have the RAM connector here, which is there, and the U7000 is just below that, there. So there is U7000, that's our controller chip for this circuit, that's U7000, and there it is on the logic board. So let's follow this and see how it's connected up to those two transistors. So those two trans transistors are Q7020 and Q7021. So let's search for those. 
Q7020. Okay, let's zoom out. So this guy is on the front side of the board. So this is often going to happen when you're working on it. You will find that the circuit will be on both sides of the board at any given time. Sometimes you have it all in one nice tidy little package. Sometimes it can be spread out all over the place. So at any rate, let's turn over. However, you will notice that we're actually working in more or less the same location, just on the opposite side of the board. So we flip over. And Q7020, we can see, is this dude here. So there is Q7020. Now, underneath that, we have L7000. So there is our coil, which again, if we switch over to here, we can see. So there is L7000 on the schematic, Q7020. And those are there and there. So the coil, as you can see, is quite a large one because it's a big power rail for the circuit. And then this guy here is going to be L7021. So that guy there. So that is what they look like on the actual board. And then they are connected to the U7000 here. And they will be connected via wires that travel through the circuit board called vias. So that is what it looks like when it's on the main board. So let's say you've got a laptop that is stone dead and it isn't turning on. The first thing we're going to want to know is, is BP bus G3 hot up? Because we need that to power anything else in the laptop. So now lastly, let's demonstrate this power supply in action by powering it up and showing you the input and the output so you can see it doing its thing. So the two places that we're going to measure are we going to measure the input to our buck converter and the output. Now we can measure this from the pin 5 of the input transistor up here and we can measure it from the output from pin 2 of the coil. This is the simplest place to get our measurements from because they're nice and close together and those, these are both nice large components. So let's check the board view to see where they physically are on the board. And if we zoom in on Q7020 there, we can see that pin 5 is on the left hand side of the transistor and it's the only one on that side. So that's going to be really easy to find. And we can also see if we click on L7000 that pin 2 is on the left side of the coil. So if we look at pin 1, we can see that pin 1 is connected to pins 1 through 3 on the L on Q7020, which again corroborates with what we see here. Pins 1 to 3 of Q7020 are connected to pin 1 of the coil. So from here now, we can translate this circuit diagram into what we're physically seeing on the board itself. So we're going to measure pin 5 and pin 2. So let's check it out. So I have plugged the charger into my logic board. Uh, it's currently in an off state because this particular logic board does not power up until it's told to. However, PPBus G3 Hot is an always present power rail. It's always on regardless of the state of the laptop. So the laptop is ready to turn on. So I'm going to set my multimeter into voltage mode and I'm going to put my black probe on any ground surface on the logic board. So we can do this by putting it on a screw hole because all screw holes are always ground. And I'm going to pick a different screw hole so I don't actually cover the screen. So let's put you down there. So we've got our ground source that we're comparing to. And now we're going to check pin 5 of Q7020. And as you can see, we have 16 volts from our charger. So that's a little bit lower than uh, what the um, schematic says. However, it's a, still about right for what our charger outputs. So the voltage that we get at our input is going to vary a little bit depending on the situation. But again, this is what these power supplies are for, because sometimes our inputs can be different. And so the buck converter is going to detect what our input is and always output the same output. So if we go down to pin 2 of the coil, as you can see, we have approximately 12.5 volts here. So our buck converter is stepping 16.2, well, 16.15 volts down to 12.62. So that is our PPBus G3 hot power supply. And now we have 
a PPBus G3 hot power supply to everywhere in the board. And if we switch back to the uh, board view, and if we actually do a search for PPBus G3 hot, we'll actually find that this appears all over the place. So PPBus G3 hot. So as you can see, from all these dots around here, you can see where PPBus G3 hot is appearing all over the place. Now, if we have a look at another couple of places on this board, let's have a look over here. Notice how we have two coils, L7400, L7401, and under, around that, we have more MOSFETs, Q74, Q7401, 7402, 7403. Look a bit familiar, do you think? We've got pairs of transistors with coils. We have more buck converters. Now this particular one we're looking at here, this is CPU vCore. So this is the power supply to the CPU. If we take a look over on our actual circuit board, as you can see, we have a pair of transistors and a coil. Just the same as down here, we have a pair of transistors and a coil. Now because CPU vCore is a bit more delicate and needs to be a bit more precise, this is a multi-phase one. So we have two of these power supplies that are linked together to provide a more stable voltage to the CPU. And if we keep searching, we'll find more of them. So if we search down here, we have transistors and a coil. And over here, we have transistors and a coil. And they're everywhere when you start looking at them. So once you know what this buck converter looks like, you'll start spotting it everywhere you look, and not just on an Apple Logic board, but on all kinds of electronics. If you look for a transistor and a coil with a small controller circuit nearby, you've got yourself a buck controller, my friend. So that concludes this lesson for today. Now we've understood how basic power systems work in the laptop. In the next episode, we'll start switching some of those on and off and seeing how it affects the laptop for real. That concludes this section of Board Repair Basics. So if you have any questions about anything that I've spoken about in this video, bash them into the comments below and check out the links for more videos, the playlist, and also my other repair videos. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.